I'm going to do the Chapter 7 Trig Identity Practice Test with you. If you haven't downloaded it yet, please go to the PB Wiki site and try it before you watch me take it up. And also, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do support the channel. I'm uh, doing a lot of work here for you. It doesn't cost you anything and all you have to do is hit that subscribe button. Okay, so we're going to take a look at this test. I'm a very nice teacher. I gave my students the formulas. You better check with your teacher to see if you have, you will have them on your test. If not, you should um, give it some practice until you've got them all figured out. Okay, so first thing, express is a single trigonometric function. So what you want to do is look for the pattern. 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Well, there it is right here. So that's the cos of 2 theta. But my theta isn't theta, it's theta over 6. So it's the cos of 2, theta over 6, and then you just simplify it. So that's the cos of theta over 3. The sine 2x cos x plus cos 2x sine x, well that's sine cos plus cosine. That's sine cos plus cosine, so it's the sine of a plus b. Only my a is 2x and my b is x. So just add those. Don't forget to finish that off. Like don't just write this line. Lots of students have done that. Okay, expresses an equivalent trigonometric ratio, not a ration, of theta. So the cos of 3 pi over 2 plus theta, let's draw just a little, um, little coordinate plane here. 3 pi over 2. So I want to be 3 pi over 2 plus theta is going to put me in this quadrant where cos is already positive. So now that I've got the right sign, I switch from cos to its co-function, which is sine and theta. You can always double check your answer if you're not sure. If you have extra time at the end of the test, you can go back. And all you have to do is put in, say, like 3 pi over 2 is 270 degrees. So do the cos of 280 and the sine of 10, and you'll see that they are the same. The sine of pi plus theta puts me in this quadrant where tan is positive and everything else is negative. So this is the negative sine of theta. And finally, the tan of pi over 2, pi over 2 plus theta. So it puts me in this quadrant. In that quadrant, tan is negative. So I put negative. I switch to the co-function, which is cotangent, and I just write theta. And there you go. Okay, find the exact value for the following using compound angle or double angle formula and special triangles. Exact value. You knew that as soon as you see that word that you need special triangles. So 11 pi over 12 is probably a good idea for you to figure out what that is in degrees. Um, pi over 12 is 15 and 15 times 11 is 165 degrees. So I can break 165. I see a 45 right away. Anything that ends in 5, if it's special triangle, it's going to have to be 45 because the other ones are 30 and 60 and multiples of those. So I have 120 degrees here. So 120 degrees is just 2 times 60. So this is 2 pi over 3. Pi over 3 is 60 times 2 is 120 and 45 degrees is pi over 4. So I can rewrite this as the cos of 2 pi over 3 plus pi over 4. Double check, that's 8 twelfths and 3 twelfths is 11 twelfths. Okay, so cos, when you're adding them, goes cos, cos, minus, sine, sine. So cos, cos, minus, sine, Sine. Okay, now the next step you want to do is you want to write them as all of their related acute angles. So these ones are already acute. I don't have to do anything. But 2 pi over 3, the cos of 2 pi over 3, C A S. So in this quadrant, that's going to be the negative cos of pi over 3. The related acute. Okay, so this one is okay. And the sine is Sine is positive in this quadrant, so that's the same thing as the sine of pi over 3, the sine of pi over 4. Okay, so let's do the 
special triangle for pi over 3. That's your 60 and your 30 would be pi over 6 up here, right? So that's 2, 1, square root 3. And the cos of pi over 3 is 1 half. So this is minus a half. Cos of pi over 4 is 1 over root 2. You should know that one off by heart. The sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. And the sine of pi over 4 is 1 over root 2. So now I multiply those out. Look, I've got the nice same denominator. So I have minus 1 minus root 3 over 2 root 2. And now I'm going to rationalize the denominator by multiplying by root 2 over root 2. So that gives me minus root 2 minus root 6 all over. Now when you multiply these, this becomes 2 times 2 is 4. And you could leave it like that, or you could leave it like this, minus root 2 plus root 6 over 4. Either or, I'm sure your teacher would be fine with. Okay, let's go on to this one. Express as a single trigonometric ratio. I've got ratio in there again. And then evaluate the ratio using special triangles. Okay, so this is sine cos plus cos sine. So again, you want to flip here, sine cos plus cosine. That's the sine of a plus b. Right? So that's the same thing as the sine of 5 pi over 36 plus 5 pi over 18. Common denominator makes this 10. That gives me the sine of 15 pi over, that's a 36 down here. Oh no, that was 18. Sorry. Um, 15, so uh, this is times 2, that's 10 pi, and 5 is 15 pi over 36, and you would want to simplify that first. So 15 pi over 36 divides by five, uh, 3, <laughs> 5 pi over 12. Okay, so how many degrees is 5 pi over 12? So again, 12 is 15. Uh, pi over 12 is 15, and 15 times 5 is 75 degrees. So I'm going to write that over here, and right away you should say, oh, well, that's just 45 and 35. So I'm going to evaluate this as the sine of pi over 4 plus pi over, what did I write here? That's supposed to be 30. Pi over 6, right? I always find these ones confusing because the 6 and the 3, I think 30, 60, but it's the other way around, right? Because it's 1 sixth. So, um, so I have pi over 4, pi over 6, so that gives me sine, sine, cos, plus, cos, sine. They're all acute angles, so I don't have to... Um, figure out their related acute angles first. So pi over 4 is 1 over root 2. The cos of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. Um, you might want to just make a quick sketch. So we're, we're dealing with this quadrant up here. Pi over 6, this is pi over 3, 2, 1, square root 3. Okay, so cos is adjacent or hypotenuse. And then 1 over root 2, sine of pi over 6 is one half. Okay, so now I have root three over two root two plus one over two root two, and that's going to give me root three plus one over two root two. And again, you're going to rationalize the denominator. That's going to give you root six plus root two over four. You find that sometimes these things all look like the very same answers. Almost, but not quite. Okay, um, number five. If sine x is 5 over 13 and x is between 0 and pi over 2, evaluate sine 2x. Okay, so let's write what the sine of 2x equals. That would be 2 sine x cos x, right? Okay, so I have the sine of x. Now be careful with this. I gave an easy one here because this is this is just in the first quadrant so I don't have to worry about the sine, the S-I-G-N sine, right? So all I need to know is if this is my angle theta here, um, the sine was 5, 13, opposite over 
hypotenuse, and that makes this um, 12, right? 169 minus 25, 144 square root. Okay, so that means the cos of x is going to be 12 over 13, adjacent over hypotenuse and opposite over hypotenuse. So 2 times the sine of x, that's 5 over 13, times the cos of x, which is 12 over 13, and that's going to give me 120 over 13. Can't simplify that, and you're done. Okay, number six, it says, solve for x in the indicated interval between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, so I have 2 sine 4x equals 1. This is an easy um, equation to solve, right? The trick is going to be with this 4, sine 4x equals a half. So sine 4x equals a half, that means 4x is going to be equal to, and if... Uh, Let's make a little sketch here, first of all, of just the regular sine function. So this is 2 pi. So where is it equal to a half? Um, that's from your special triangles. A half is pi over 6, or 30 degrees, and 5 pi over 6. But that's 4x. So that means I'm trying to solve for x. So x is going to be pi over 24 and 5 pi over 24. So all I'm doing is dividing by 4 here to get these two. Now that's not going to do it, right? Because if 4x, the sine of 4x means that the period of the function is 2 pi over 4, and that's pi over 2. So pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. So that means I'm going to have this. Right? There's my sine 4x. So I should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 solutions between 0 and 2 pi because one period is pi over 2. So I have four full cycles. Okay, so I know I need eight solutions. I have two of them. So what I want to do is just start adding the period which is pi over 2, to each of these until I hit 48 over 24. Don't go over it because it's between 0 and 2 pi. So pi over 2, that's the same as 12 pi over 24. Get the same denominator so you can add them easy. So x is going to be, just add, so it gives me 13 pi over 24, and 12 is 17 pi over 24. Okay, that's not even to 1 pi yet. So that's that's what I've, I've done to here, right? So the next ones, I add 12 pi over 24. That's 25 pi over 24. Add 12 again, 29 pi over 24. And there's 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If I add another 12 pi, I would be at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 solutions, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Oh no, not this one. That's why I kept thinking, ooh, this was 4x. So I have six solutions. I need one more. So that's 37 pi over 24. And 29 and 12 is 41 pi over 24. Now if I added 12 more pi here, I'd have 49 over 24, which is um, outside the domain that you've been given. Okay, so just stop right there. Now let's go on to this one here. 2 sine squared theta might equals 1 minus sine theta. Okay, so you might, you might be a little distracted by this one and think, well, if I bring the 1 over here, I'd have 2 sine squared theta minus 1, and, and isn't that already an identity? or 1 minus 2 sine squared theta if I brought this over here and that one over there. But you don't want to get into that because that's cos 2 theta. You This is nice. So you have a square, you have a single unit. It's like x squared, x in a number. So this is a quadratic one. Okay, it's just a quadratic. So 2 sine squared theta plus sine theta. 2 sine squared theta plus sine theta minus 1 is equal to 0. 
And now you need to do product sum. So I'm looking for a product of minus 2 and a sum of 1. So that would be 2 times negative 1. Right? Gives me that, gives me that. Put them over the first number, which is 2, and reduce. So that's going to be 1, 1. So that's going to give me sine theta plus 1 times 2 sine theta minus 1 equals 0. It's just like a little quadratic here. So I have two solutions. So this first bracket gives me sine theta is equal to minus 1. And this would give me sine theta equals, bring the 1 over, divide by 2, a half. So where is theta at negative 1? Well, let's do a quick sketch. So that would be here. That's 3 pi over 2. And a half, again, you're going to use that one a lot, so you might as well get used to that one. That's pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, and you're done. Okay, letter C, cos 2x equals 2 minus 3 sine x. Okay, so the problem is that you've got coses and sines. You don't want that. You want to be able to get this all in terms of sine. So what's sine? Cos of 2x. Cos of 2x can be written as, let's take a look at our, our formula sheet. So cos 2 theta, if I want it to be all sines, I would choose this one, right? 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So I'm going to put that in instead. So 1 minus 2 sine squared x. And I'm going to bring everything to the other side. So plus 3 sine x minus 2 equals 0. Now simplify this. So I have a squared. Um, I'm going to leave the negative in just for now so you don't wonder where it went to. We're going to divide it out before we factor. So 1 minus 2 is minus 1. And now I divide everything by a negative 1. So 2 sine squared x minus 3 sine x plus 1 is equal to 0. So I'm looking for a product of 2 and a sum of minus 3. product of 2 and the sum of minus 3 it multiplies to 2 and adds to negative 3. Well, that would be minus 2 times negative 1. And I put them over 2 and simplify. So it gives me sine x minus 1, sine x minus 1, and this one gives me 2 sine x minus 1. So it's almost like the last one. Um, except this time we want to find out where is sine x equal to 1. Sine x is equal to 1 at pi over 2. And where is sine x equal to a half? And again, that's x is equal to pi over 6, 5 pi over 6. Okay, so there's that's the end. Ooh, I wasn't showing you that. I'm sorry. Um, that's what's better about being in a classroom. The students would say, Miss, Miss, we can't see your work. Flip it up. Okay, now let's go on to this. Prove the following identities. <coughs> so sine pi minus x. Oh, these are, these are the ones that are going to deal with um, the cast rule and your related acute angles or co-functions. See these ones? Pi over 2. <coughs> I'm sorry, I got a cold. Pi over 2 is your related acute, or co-function angles, sorry, co-functions. So what's the sine of pi minus x? So I'm in this quadrant, so that's the same thing as the sine of x, right? What's the tan of pi plus x? That will just be the tan of x, because tan is positive. Times the cotangent of pi over 2 minus x. So that puts me back this way. So everything's positive, and cotangent goes to tangent, so tan x. The tan of pi over 2 plus x, tan goes to cotangent, and it's going to be negative because tan is negative in this quadrant. So that's the negative cotangent of x. Times the cos of 2 pi, 2 pi is here, minus x brings me this way, and cos is positive, so that's just going to be the cos of x and the sine of negative x. The sine of negative x 
So if we go this way, sine of negative x, that's the negative sine of x. Okay, so now we've got all these things we've got to, to clear off. <coughs> Sorry. And we're going to take a look at tan. Can divide up with tan. Um, negative times a negative becomes a positive. So we can make these positive. And this sign goes off with this one. So now I have cos x over cotan x. And cotangent x, 1 over cotangent x is just the tan. So if I separated this like this, just let me show you first. So this is like this, right? 1 over cotan is tan. So cos x times tan x, tan is sine x over cos x. And look at that, we end up with sine x. Now I should have started by saying left side and right side. And then you'd say left side equals right side QED. Okay, so the last one I have is 2 cotangent 2x equals cotangent x minus tan x. Okay, so <clears throat> what side is more difficult? Well, this one probably because we have a double angle. So the cotangent of 2 times the cotangent of 2x. So let's bring back that formula sheet that had the formulas on it. So if we're looking at the cotangent, here's the tan of 2 theta. So I want the cotangent, so I have to do is flip it around. So this is going to be left side is going to be 2. Don't forget your 2 is out here, and that's all by itself, right? 2 times this. So 2 times... 1 minus tan squared theta over 2 tan theta. So the tans are going to, the twos are going to cancel out. And now I just have, this is so easy, I can break this into two parts, just like if I said 1 minus 2 over 6 is 1 over 6 minus 2 over 6, I can say the same thing about this, 1 over tan theta minus tan squared theta over tan theta. And lo and behold, we have the right answer already. I don't know why this was worth four marks. I must have been feeling, I guess I felt it was difficult for them to rearrange this somehow. It's because one over tan is just cotan and tan squared by divided by tan is just going to give you minus tan. Oh, and I changed my thetas to x's. Sorry about that. It's all the same thing, right? Okay, so there's your practice test. I hope that helps you out on your test. And I'm sorry I've got a cold and I sound miserable. Hope you have a good day. Bye-bye.